Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this part, I started out in the field. That's where I ended the last time because Impa took me back here. Um, if I wanted to, I could go and become an adult right now using glitches, of course. But there's a couple of things I want to do before that, just for the hell of it. Which are pretty cool to show off and will actually save me a little bit of time later on. First thing I'm going to do is head all the way down to Lake Hylia. And, of course, this means I'm going to backwalk throughout the entire field. But, thanks to the little ca uh, camera glitch... It shouldn't be too unpleasant to watch. Also means that I can look out for any fences that I have to backflip over because I'm pretty sure there's a couple of those in my path. I'm not sure if I'm going to run into the owl down here. I think I might. I'll just avoid him if that is the case. I know he's waiting outside Gerudo Valley, which I'm going to head to after I go to Lake Hylia to see if there's anything I can do down there. So yeah, you can hear like the style kids just coming up, but... I'm moving way too fast for them, and yeah, there is the owl. So, Young Link can't actually get over these big fences. In fact, I don't think Adult Link can either. Both of them are too small, so... I'll just go up this ladder. As long as I don't go anywhere near that guy, he shouldn't be able to talk to me. Oops. I don't like playing this game when it's night in the game. I think it's just... The atmosphere isn't nearly as nice. It's the same with Majora's Mask. Everything just feels a lot nicer during the day. So Lake Hylia, this is one of my favourite places in the game, just because there's like a bunch of cool stuff you can do, mostly with the fishing pond. But before I even get that far, I guess I'm going to show off something at this house. Which is just a cool little oddity, and in fact it lets you get in the water temple early. And without the iron boots as well, but it's kind of tricky to do, and it's pointless to do it as a kid. So, I guess just to set it up I can just do this. If I just walk in here, make sure I'm at the right spot. Oops. I just walk right into the corner and do a jump slash at the right time and at the right position, which actually can be a little hard even on an N64 controller where the sensitivity isn't ridiculous like it is on GameCube. I should be able to just pop right through. Yeah, just like that. So I can enter the door from the back, or more interestingly, I can just jump down here and somewhere around out of bounds if I want. This also means that I could get into like Zora's domain without, you know, going the other way. I could just get in through there if I timed it properly. But I'm not going to bother with that. Instead, I'm just going to head over to the fishing pond because there's something cool I can show off in there. Two things, actually, that are really interesting. The first one actually will be kind of useful, and it's definitely something that a lot of people might want to do if they're just playing this game for fun. Because it can help you out quite a lot. And it also skips having to do some other stuff that's supposed to be required. So, I'll just pay the guy so I can get the rod. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually try and catch a fish. Yeah, I want that big one over there. I know exactly where he is, so I'm just going to run over here and catch him. He's always at this thing in the middle. Yeah, okay, so... Hopefully this won't take too long to do. Sometimes catching these guys can be a pain. That's not going to be the case today, it seems. Yeah, they seem more likely to like grab the line if you press B to, re to bring it in towards you first, instead of like using A and R. But yeah, sometimes that happens. I don't know. I think that's just luck. Because I don't think I did anything wrong there. Alright, let's see if he's back here yet. No, he's not. I hate it when he does that. Like, he has two locations that he can go to. And I know there's, like, other big fish in here as well, but I'm not really too sure where they are. I think one is, like, over by the poles or something. But what to do is just go in the pond and swim around. Whenever you get near a fish, they move away. So if I find him at his other location, he'll just swim back to the first one. At least that's what should happen. I think this is probably my favourite part of Ocarina of Time, the fishing pond. It's just so fun. But at the same time, I'm not sure I would really like a game that was just about fishing. I could rather do it in real life. Like, Big the Cat's level in Sonic Adventure was kind of shitty. Oops. Right, hopefully he's back there. I can't actually tell if he is. Until I do this. No, he's not. Whatever. He's got to be over at this little group over here. 
I really should just like learn where he goes to so I can just get him from there. I'm pretty sure it's like over here. But hopefully he will have moved by now. I can't believe I had him on the line so quickly and then lost him almost instantly. But that's just what happens. Alright, he's nowhere to be found. So rather than waste a lot more time just trying to get this guy to move, I just exited the pond and came back in and that has actually reset him to his default position which is right here. So hopefully he'll grab it nice and quick like he did before. Oh, he's already been difficult. swimming away. It is possible to get him to grab it when it's like right next to Link. It's just kind of unlikely, I guess. There we go. So hopefully I can just pull him in. Now, if you've done this before then you'll know that catching the big fish in the pond, or one of the big fish, I think it's like anything that's 10 pounds or over, as young Link will give you a piece of heart from the guy. I didn't check how much that weighed, but like it gave the whole wow speech, so obviously it was heavy. But if you actually, after catching it, swim into the middle of the pond, or just into the water in general, hold Z or Z, and then just keep holding it and swim out of the pond. And keep holding it even when you're out, and just like walk over to the guy, and keep holding it as you talk to him, and ask him to weigh your fish. He'll actually give you this instead, which is the golden scale. You're supposed to get that as an adult when you catch the big fish which is in here when you're an adult. I think it's like something that's um, maybe 18 pounds or more. It's a lot harder to catch than the little one, so... Yeah, it can definitely save you a lot of hassle if you just do that glitch and get it as a kid. Not really sure why that works. I'm not really sure why holding Z makes it work either, but... Whatever, I'm not going to complain. So the next thing I want to show off is a way to actually take the rod outside of the pond. Now, before I do this, I'm going to just flip the camera so I can demonstrate this. Okay, so I'm going to run and I'm going to press B and you're going to notice that right after I press it, Link is going to take like a step forward before he actually casts the rod. So I'm going to press it now. May have been hard to see, but he actually took an extra step. Now, I can use this to my advantage. If I run off this rock and cast it before he reaches the end, then he'll actually jump off right after I press B. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Okay, so now you can see that it cast after he landed and I can actually move around with it cast. Now that glitch that I just did there is exclusive to version 1.0, the original version of the game. If you have 1.1, basically almost any Grey cartridge, or if you have the European or Australian one, or the GameCube or Virtual Console one, and certainly on the 3D one, then that glitch is not going to work for you. But there is a way to do it in any version, which I'm now going to show off. You just go into the shallow part of the pond, and you dive just before Link comes out. It can be kind of hard to get the right spot. And just mash B. Yeah, well you could see like there was like a, a couple of frames where he was standing and then he fell back in the water. The idea is to press B when he's standing like that. Yeah, sometimes that happens too. I was too close to the shore that time, that's why it happened. This is certainly a bit more tricky to do than the 1.0 method, but unfortunately it is the only one that works in later versions of the game. I don't know why he's like doing this this way right now. Normally he should like the fall should cancel the fact that he's cast a rod. That's what's supposed to happen. I think I'm just definitely too close to land. But yeah, like I said, this one can definitely take a bit of practice. Finding the right spot is by far the hardest part of it. But it should have the same effect. effect. Okay, like that. You saw that I cast it and then he landed during the casting. So now I can run around like this and when you walk up to the door, although the, B, the A button doesn't change to open, it is going to work and the guy doesn't give you his little speech about leaving with the rod so I can just walk straight out. So, I'm outside with the rod. I can hold it, it's invisible. I don't want to cast it because it's going to soft lock the game. If I were to cast it and then an enemy were to hit me, like for instance if I did it over here and then a tech tight hit me, then I'd be able to play again, but otherwise I'd be completely stuck. Now, I went in the water just now, 
If I had paused the game when I was in the water and unpaused, I would have had no sword on the B button. But since I came out of the water first, I can pause the game, unpause, and now I have a Deku stick. Fully functional. If you break it against something, your stick number goes down. You actually can do this as an adult, and it will still put a Deku stick on B, but when you press B to pull it out, the game just freezes. At least on 1.0 it freezes, on the later versions it just throws up an error sound because you're not allowed to pull out sticks as an adult. But on the GameCube version, and maybe the Virtual Console version, I'm not sure, I can't remember, I think it does on that one too. You can actually pull out like an invisible stick as an adult and it behaves just like the Master Sword. So that's kind of interesting. But I don't have any actual use for having a stick on B right now. That might come into what I'm going to do later on in this playthrough, but right now I'm just going to re-equip the sword and continue with that. So the camera's going to flip a bunch of times in here, basically whenever I get to a corner in the wall. And yeah, I can see the owl up there just waiting for me. There's a lot of lag right now because of all the style kids. It's making it hard to do this camera trick, but whatever. I just need to hug the wall and make sure this guy doesn't talk to me. So the next place I'm going to head to is Gerudo Valley, which has probably the most memorable music in the game. Possibly from any Zelda game. Definitely one of the best themes. And this is significant because I'm still a kid right now. And obviously you're not supposed to be able to get to the desert this way as a kid. The idea is that you come here as an adult, you use a Pona or you use the long shot to get across the broken bridge. You head into the fortress, you complete the training grounds and do all that crap and then you cross the haunted wasteland. I'm going to skip every single one of those things that I just mentioned except for crossing the wasteland but that's going to be pretty unique as well. So hopefully this next trick isn't going to take me too many tries. It is one of the most famous Ocarina of Time tricks. It's not really technically a glitch, it's just more like a clever abuse of gameplay mechanics, I guess you could call it. I mean, you're really just jumping off a ledge and then slashing your sword, but it's called the Kaku Jump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on this post here, get as close to the edge as I can. I'm going to run up just a tiny bit and then I'm going to like steer left. And hopefully if I do it just right, Link is going to have enough speed that he's going to jump high off of this peg and then I can slash my sword before the fence and he should be able to get over it. It probably will take a few tries, but let's try it. See, so you got a small jump there, that's one of the results that can happen. I'm still a little sick, I was just coughing right there. That's another result that can happen, you'll just kind of walk right off. But as long as you don't fall into the river, it's not really a big deal. If you do fall into the river, you just have to come all the way back from the lake. Okay. So that was close. But not close enough. I was just a little bit away from the wall. I don't think I had enough height that time. I must have, like, hugged the corner or something for too long. There is a way to pause buffer this, but that's really, really lame, and I don't want to do that. Even though we'd probably save a lot of time definitely can be done without any pause buffer. Yeah, I think that was my own fault there. I think I pressed B way too early. He wasn't even touching the wall. Yeah, that angle was really bad. You, you want him to be more facing to the left than I was right there. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm over this fence. That's the hardest part done, but we're not out of danger yet because these guards up here can still see you. Until you have the membership card that you get as an adult, you're completely vulnerable to them. So I'm just gonna... Okay. Nope, never mind. They call me. God damn it. Okay, so let's try this again. Of course I get it first try this time. Of course. That's cool though. So now I just need to make sure that I can see these guards really can't see much right now. Okay, I know where that one is. And this one is right there. So, she's moving away. Okay. So I'm safe now. I'm behind these boxes. There's one little glitch I can show off right here, actually. So if you just walk between them, it pushes you on top. I don't think they can see you, so we're set. I'm going to head down to the fortress now. Of course the camera changed. A very unusual place, not sure why I did it there. So here's the Gerudo's Fortress. This is 
this would probably blow your mind to see this being here as a kid, like 10 years ago. Maybe not 10 years ago, maybe like, I don't know, 13 years ago or whatever. Back when there was a lot of like rumours circling around the internet. Not necessarily the internet actually, but like magazines and stuff about how to get here as a kid. About how to cross back through the wasteland. It was kind of like the Mew thing from the Pokemon games. So, before I actually get to the wasteland, as you can see by the way, the gate is down and it's supposed to only open when you get the membership card and show it to the guard there. But um, there's something I want to take care of first. This is the Gerudo training grounds. Can't get in there, it's locked, no one's here. Actually that's another thing, like all the Gerudos on the outside are gone. There are some on the inside but I'm not going to bother with them. Also if you get caught by them they chuck you in that prison up there and you're stuck because you don't have the hookshot. So before I do anything else I want to come back down here. I want to get ISG, which again is Infinite Sword Glitch, in this sign by interrupting the crouch step and then like reading the sign. So my sword is now attacking infinitely, but that's not the property that I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that Link can't walk off ledges. And we'll see why that's so important in just a second. It's not actually necessary for this next glitch, but it does make it a lot easier. And I have failed this glitch before, so I don't want to take any risks. So heading up to the archery range, of course I can't do anything here, I don't have a Pona. And the guard isn't even there, she's usually over there by that tent. So I'm going to do the same thing I did at Hyrule Castle and just walk up this seam. It's a lot easier because I do have infinite sword glitch on, but of course that can still happen if you're too reckless like I just was. Just need to slowly get him on the start of it and then you can just... Yeah, if you hug like the right side of it, it's pretty easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll over to here. I'm going to get him as far into this... Whoops. I'm going to get him as far into this corner over here as I can. Okay, and now I'm going to face the wall, hold Z, I'm going to side hop to the right. And Link is stuck to the ceiling. This is called the anti-gravity glitch. Sometimes when you like side hop into a ceiling, which normally you're never supposed to be able to get that high, that's probably why it happens. Well, sometimes it'll just like get stuck to it, and you'll travel along it until he lands, until the ceiling ends, which was up there. And because of that, I was able to like go over the loading zone, which means that although this stuff is still here, most of it's invisible now and I can just walk through the gate because it's been unloaded. So this is the Gerudo training grounds, there's not a lot to do in here. I'm going to save the game just in case I screw this next thing up. I'm going to walk around this way because there's a little text trigger if you take the path directly to it. So anyone that's played through this place before knows that it's pretty much one of the worst places in the game. I don't know, I didn't really find it that fun. But if you get here as Young Link you can do this. And just get straight to the ice arm chest. What I did there was I stood on the wall. I'm not actually going to do it again because I want to preserve my bomb chews, but I just dropped down and then grabbed it again. But just before I grabbed it again, I pressed the bomb chew button in R so that it exploded as I grabbed the wall. It's basically the same thing that I did in Bottom of the Well with the Sculptula, but this time I controlled absolutely everything about it, which meant I didn't have to pause bar for it, which is always good. So here are the ice arrows, completely useless, one of the optional things you can get in this game. I'm probably never actually going to use them. Actually there might be one thing I can show off with them when I'm an adult, obviously I can't use them as a kid anyway, but yeah. It's just cool to have now two items that I can't like turn on at all. And of course it doesn't let you even equip this because I don't have the bow. But whatever, I'm just going to do a save warp back outside. because that way I don't have to go through the fence and the doors that normally get you in there are all locked with keys and I don't have any keys. So here comes something pretty cool. Obviously everything's loaded again so I don't have to find some way to get past that fence. But I am going to have to find a way to get past this fence. So I think, is the guard here? Yeah, she's on the other side of the fence. Um, she won't actually catch you even when you get close to her, so it's okay, there's nothing to worry about there. So I'm going to climb up this ladder, and I'm going to have to try and find a way to get over this fence. Obviously I can't just get the membership card. Although actually, I wonder if you could do that as a kid. Maybe you could. Anyway, I'm just going to, let me think, I'm going to do a neutral roll, turn around 180 degrees. Just do a side roll like that, and if I do two side hops here, Link just bypasses the ladder and stands on the boundary like this. So I can just walk down here and side hop back in. And just like that. On 
the other side of the door. What I was talking about there with the side roll thing is basically if you do a side hop and then don't do anything else but roll, he like does it at 45 degrees. So if you let go of Z during that and then roll press it, it's exactly the same as having just tilted 45 degrees on the control stick. But it's like a lot more precise because obviously when you do this the camera starts to change sometimes. So it's a little easier to do it that way. That just let me set it up perfectly. Anyway, here's the wasteland. Which you're absolutely never supposed to be able to cross as a kid. Mainly because... Well, there's two things. The first thing is this. This is the river of sand. You're not supposed to be able to get across it because you're supposed to either use the hover boots to walk across it or the long shot. The hook shot doesn't make it. The long shot to hit those crates over there and pull yourself over. But if you just time this just right, you actually can just back walk right across the edge of it like this. And just side hop up. So that was pretty pathetic. Kind of sad to overlook that. So now you just have to follow these posts. There's a sign nearby here somewhere. I guess I'll see it in a second. Yeah, there it is. This guy points to a bomb shoe vendor. But I can't afford them right now. It's like 200 rupees and it's pretty much a waste of money because I'm going to get something free in just a little while. So yeah, this is definitely the easier part of crossing the wasteland as a kid. Because you can actually see where you're supposed to go. Although sometimes it can be a little hard to actually see the, the posts in the distance. That's why it's always a good idea to do this during the day in the game. So up here is where you're supposed to get the pole. The ghost that like takes you through the rest of the, the path. But um, the problem with that is, although you can hear him, he's definitely here. And if I read this, it'll like, tell you about it or whatever. But I can't turn on the Lens of Truth, because I don't have magic, so I'm going to have to do this without him. Without him, without it. So there's a couple of pointers that you can look for to let you know where you are. The first thing I'm going to do is just roll between these two flags. I'm going to keep going until the sand sort of reaches its bottom point. I'm going to take a few steps forward, I'm going to turn to the left. I'm now going to look at the mini-map and align it so that the top of the yellow arrow is completely straight. And here, I'm going to keep going until I reach the top of the sand, right here, when it starts to go down. And then I'm going to look to my left, and you can see there's like parts where the sand is dark, then light, then dark again. I want to go to the second part where it's dark, just where the B button is right now. So I'm just going to head towards that. Now when I get here, I'm going to set it up so that the bottom of the yellow arrow is straight. I'm going to head forward to the top of this hill. When I reach the top of it just here, I'm going to readjust again, this time so that the left side of it is straight. And you can see the box right there, so we know we're almost there. And when it's all set up, I can just run forward. And you know you've made it when you reach the levers. Just be careful that they don't kill you. And when you reach them, start heading towards the box. It's important that you don't head straight to the box as soon as you can see it, because there is still a part that will like, get you lost. You have to go at kind of a weird angle. And you can see over in the distance there that there's like the the flags that you're supposed to go to. So I'm just gonna get the camera thing working and then back walk all the way over. Because when you're back walking the levers won't be able to catch you. So you should be safe. And just like that, I've crossed the entire desert as a kid. Starting from Gerudo Valley all the way to the Desert Colossus. This was pretty mind-blowing back in the day. But I guess there's a lot more interesting stuff nowadays in Ocarina of Time. So here we are in the Desert Colossus. Just have to be careful not to die here. Yeah, I really don't want to die here because these things actually do quite a bit of damage. I think it's like half a heart each time. I'm just gonna bank walk the rest of the way. We can see where we're going, so the camera thing isn't too important right now. So here we are in the spirit temple. Oh, by the way, those pots, um, if you do have damage... I know I don't right now, and I did a second ago, it's because I had to edit this little part out. Because there was a little mistake with the recording. But anyway, if they hit you and you have damage already, they give you a heart. And like those things do a quarter heart damage. So it's like the most useless enemy ever. Anyway, here's Naburu. She talks for a long time, so I'm going to cut this part out. 
Jesus Christ, she talks a lot. Anyway, in fact, I'm going to save the game so I don't ever have to listen to that again. So I can just head through this little tunnel. And I'm not going to complete this whole section. I don't actually want to get the silver gauntlets, but I do want to get something else that's in here. I need to be very careful with these guys because I don't want to let them touch my shield. Okay. Because they will burn it, because it is wood, obviously. So, I don't have the slingshot either, which makes it a little harder to kill these things. These things are probably only going to attack me after they light themselves on fire. So, I'll just try and be careful and get them then. Okay. Oh, well, I guess this one's going to attack me early, that's perfect. So, I'm going to equip the Deku Stick. I'm going to try not to break it here, because I've only got one. I'm going to do a jump slash with it, just in the air. So that my power crouch stab now has the power of a Deku Stick. And that means I can kill this thing really quickly. So I have to not get hit by it. So this opens these two doors, and I have to go in this one first. I need to light the Deku Stick. Just light these two. This makes a little chest appear on the other side, which has a key in it, and that's going to be necessary for us to progress here. So I have to go in the other side and go through a couple of rooms. First thing I'm going to do, actually, again, is kill him. You'll see that it only takes three power crouch stabs with the Deku Stick. That's because the Deku Stick is actually as powerful as the Master Sword, if you can believe that. So now that I've killed him, I'm going to have to try and hit that switch over there. Obviously, I don't have the like the boomerang or the, the slingshot or anything, really. So I'm just going to align with this wall and make sure I'm completely straight. And I'm going to... Oh, I guess I could just do that, actually. I'll just go to the corner and walk off. This way, when I turn around, I should be facing the switch, actually. I'd like to be... No, that screwed up. Should have known that would happen, actually. Okay, this is where I want to be. This way, when I turn around, I can just let go of a bomb shoe and time it so that it hits that switch over there. So I'm going to count to the second flash, then shield drop it. So like that. Hopefully that'll explode it. Okay, perfect. So now I just have to be careful not to die from this thing. And if I did lose my shield, that chest there would actually contain another one. So I'm going to not open it, because if you do have a shield, it gives you 5 rupees, which is totally useless. So in here, I just have to hit this switch. And just run around the room so that this thing will like move into the fire. Just like that. When I was a kid, I always made sure I had like Din's fire for this room and tried to kill it that way. And there's a nice red rupee. Those things always give you a lot of money. So again, I'm gonna have to be careful for two things in here. The first being that there's more fire keys. Let me try and kill this guy really quick. Okay, forget it. There's no time. I need to just get the key and run for it. Because the other thing is about to get me. The hand that comes down from the ceiling. So as long as I can get out of here, I'll be safe. Okay, I don't should I shouldn't be in any more danger for losing my shield, so that's good. So this guy will be back, but he's not gonna be a hassle. Now that I have the key, I can go through this other little tunnel. If Link would like to do it. And through here, before I go through the door. I'm going to get these. These are Deku Nuts. These are going to be pretty useful for some of the bosses. And I've got ISG right now because the cutscene interrupted it. But I'll lose it when I go through this door. That's one of the many ways you can lose ISG. Okay, so up here there's two Sculptulas. Obviously you would normally hit them with the Boomerang or the Slingshot. I guess I could kill them with Chews if I wanted, but I don't really want to. It's kind of a waste. So I'm just going to take it slow. Wait for him to turn around. And that was pretty easy. So what I'm going to do in here is align myself with this wall. Turn around 180 degrees. Now align myself with this switch. Make sure the left side of the B button is touching it, like roughly the center. I'm going to take out a chew. I'm going to count to the third flash and then she'll drop it. So one, two, three. And hopefully that should do exactly what I want it to and it did. And in this chest is ten more bomb chews. I think you can hold 20 right now until you upgrade your bomb bag, even though you don't have a bomb bag right now, the game just assumes that this is like the most you can hold, I guess. So rather than walk all the way out, I'm just gonna save warp again.
You'll notice that the 3D N thing for the logo is actually really bright. That's another thing that's exclusive to version 1.0. They toned it down a little bit in the later versions. So let me just demonstrate that thing I was talking about earlier. Let this guy hit me. Yeah, he gave me a heart, so totally useless. I need to go back outside now to learn the song because even though I'm a kid, it still triggers this cutscene. And this is going to let me do basically the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to learn this song as an adult and play it to get back here as a kid. I'm going to do the complete opposite, learn it as a kid and come back here as an adult by playing it. So I'm going to edit most of this cutscene out, but there are a few funny things in it that I want to show off. So now that I've learned the song, Link is struggling to fit into place. He's kind of bouncing up and down a little bit. He's not sure if he wants to be a kid or an adult. But yeah. That's a pretty big sequence break right there, to meet Sheik when you're a kid. Can't imagine that ever being intentional. So, back in the Desert Colossus, I'm just going to do a save, and this means that when I reload my file, I'm going to be back in Link's house, which is where I want to be for the next section. So, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.